Hello again my friends, the launch day for Destiny 2 draws ever closer, you can practically smell the smouldering rubble of the tower, and when September 6th finally rolls around, the grind for all that sweet precious loot starts anew. Veteran Guardians can no longer rely on the arsenal of weapons they accumulated in Destiny 1, because none of the gear from Destiny 1 carries over into the sequel, no weapons, no armour, no power, we all start from scratch. Those of us keen to level up as fast as possible for when the raid drops September 13th or if you're just curious to learn about some of the cool new things Destiny 2 is introducing, well, this is the video for you. So then, we're going to talk about the best way to increase your character's level and power, legendary shards, a brand new currency that you'll need in order to purchase exotics from Zur, how to get your hands on weapon and armor mods, and even how combining specific weapons in your kinetic and energy slots will grant you additional benefits, all this and much more. Now, now this info was gathered from Destiny 2's leaked strategy guide, so friendly warning, mild spoilers ahead. No story spoilers, but if you want to jump into Destiny 2 completely blind, avert your gaze now. If you're still here, you curious little scamp, let's begin. So then, first up, your Guardian's level and power, which can be seen here. This Guardian is level 20, power 200. So what's the difference between your level and your power? Well, your level determines the gear you can equip, the subclass and abilities you unlock, and the activities which you can participate in. In short, the higher your level, the more stuff you can do. This is your level bar. Simply playing the game will help you fill it. Each mission, activity and enemy you kill will count towards leveling up. Once this bar is full, you'll increase a level and gain an upgrade point. Now this upgrade point can be used to unlock a node on one of your subclasses. Like I said, simply playing the game will level you up. Running through the campaign, completing public events, taking out enemies, competing in the crucible, you get the idea. Just just play the game. Now your power level is a little bit more complicated and well more of a grind. The higher your power level, the more damage you can inflict and the more damage you can take. You'll need to have a high power level to stand a chance of success in Destiny's endgame activities. For example, Nightfall Strikes, Trials of the Nine and of course the Raid. The gear you have equipped determines your power, so you'll need weapons and armor with a high power level. Now, if you pull the left trigger on your character screen, you can see the power level of all your equipped items. This Guardian has an overall light level of 200 power because all his equipped weapons and armor pieces are 200 power. Completing activities, earning engrams, ranking up your reputation with vendors, playing in the Crucible, these are just some of the ways you'll earn gear. Now get this, up until you hit power level 260, you'll find that every weapon and armor piece you earn will help you increase your power level. However, once you hit power level 260, it gets a little trickier. So then, to advance beyond power 260, you'll need to complete weekly milestones. Now, you can check your weekly milestones by pulling the left trigger on your map. Some examples of weekly milestones are Call to Arms, in which you have to play a certain amount of Crucible matches, Strikes, in which you have to complete two strikes, and Flashpoints, in which you complete public events. Now, if you want to advance beyond power 260, you'll need to complete your milestones every week, so be sure that you keep an eye on them. And here's a pro tip, there's only a limited number of milestones per week, so make sure you're the highest possible power level before completing them. That way, you'll gain the maximum possible power from them. Okay, so let's move on to legendary shards, which can be used to improve gear or trade for other items. Now, this is the currency you'll need to buy exotics from Zur. And here he is, Zur, Agent of the Nine, an enigmatic chap and no mistake. Now, in Destiny 1, you needed strange coins to buy exotics from him. Not anymore. Strange coins have been retired in favour of legendary shards, so how do you get your hands on them? Well, if you dismantle a legendary item, you get two legendary shards. If you dismantle an exotic item, you get ten legendary shards. They also have a chance to drop from weekly nightfalls, flashpoints, planetary chests, lost sector chests, raid chests, and raid encounters. So be sure to grind these activities and stock up on as many legendary shards as you can. Now, Zer only appears in-game between Friday Friday and Sunday, so you'll need to grab those exotics during this time. And so will no longer appear in the tower, and you won't find him in the farm either. Instead, he'll randomly pop up in a public sector on one of the four destinations, European Dead Zone, Nessus, Io, or Titan. Happy hunting. Okay, so next up, we're going to talk about weapon and armor mods. Let's start with weapon mods. Now, weapon mods come in three delicious flavors. Mods that change the damage type of your weapon to Arc, Solar, or Void. Shaders that change your weapon's color scheme 
and exotic ornaments that change the appearance of exotic weapons. And yes, the infusion system from Destiny 1 returns for Destiny 2. Next up, armor mods, which can really help out how well you kill stuff. For example, mods that speed up ability regeneration and even how well your weapons perform. So definitely worth seeking these out. You'll get most of your armor mods from decrypting bright engrams, which drop every time you level up, or trading with Banshee 44, that's the gunsmith vendor. And of course, armor also supports shader mods, so you can switch up the color of your gear. Next up, we're going to talk about some very cool exotic weapon bonuses. Now, we're definitely straying into spoiler territory here, so here's another friendly warning to give you a chance to bail. If you're still here, well, you just can't help yourself, can you? Let's begin. Okay, so there are two kinetic exotic weapons that can combine with energy weapons to provide what the strategy guide calls additional benefits. So then, the exotic Mida Multitool Scout Rifle is back. And if you equip the Mida Mini Tool Submachine Gun in your energy slot at the same time, you'll get some additional benefits. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what those additional benefits are. Next up, an exotic hand cannon called Sturm. Now, if you pair this up with a legendary sidearm called Drang, again, you'll get some additional benefits. Next up, in an interview at PAX West, Luke Smith revealed some very interesting details regarding Destiny's lore. In Destiny 2, every single exotic and every single piece of Raiden Trials gear will have its own lore tab that you can access in-game by simply inspecting the weapon and pressing L2. You'll be able to read the story behind each of these unique weapons, something that Luke Smith worked very hard with Bungie's writing staff to make sure well, that it's worth reading. So yeah, great news for lore nerds like Bife, who let's be honest, probably soiled his undergarments when he heard about this. Bife, change your pants. And check this out, Game tweeted out an image that confirms the dates for Destiny's expansions. The Curse of Osiris drops winter 2017. So expect it in December, three months after Destiny 2 launches, and the Rasputin expansion drops spring 2018. So yeah, we have a lot of content to look forward to. Now, if you want to learn more about the Curse of Osiris, stick around until the end of the video. There was a recent leak that revealed some very juicy details, and I covered all of it. Well worth a watch. Now, many of you guys have been asking me, Papa Console, how hyped are you for Destiny 2 on a scale of 1 to 10? Well... Here's my answer. So yeah, not really bothered to be honest. I'm kidding, I've been covering Destiny news for well over four years and waiting for this sequel to drop for over two years, so the anticipation levels are pretty damn high and of course, I'll continue to provide you with daily Destiny content in the build up to launch and beyond. All you have to do is tune in and watch and if you like what you see, you know, feel free to drop a like. It really does help this channel grow and let me know that you like the kind of content that I'm putting out. Thank you so much. And just in case you haven't already done so, you can subscribe and turn on notifications and that way you will not miss a single thing. We have gained over 10,000 subscribers in the past seven days alone and that's crazy. That's a lot of 
of Destiny fans. So yeah, welcome to this delightful community. I know we'll make you all feel nice and welcome. And I'll continue to do my best to inform and entertain you. I hope you have a pleasant stay, my friends. Now here's a little heads up. I'll be receiving a mystery package from Activision tomorrow, which I'll be unboxing for you guys right here on this channel. Now I have no idea what it is, but I think it's safe to assume it's going to be something to do with Destiny 2. So stay tuned for that. As you can imagine, I'm rather excited. And guys, if you want to know more about the Curse of Osiris expansion that I talked about earlier, click this image. Like I said, it's well worth a watch. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for daily Destiny content. And thank you so much for watching. And as always, a tee -hee -hee. until next time, Guardians.